All right, welcome back. Today we're back on the crossfire and we're going to be getting into some technical points of doing the roll cage. So there'll be a couple things we got to try to figure out how to do and get them done correctly. All right, so one of our first steps is coming through and getting our diagonal, which is a single piece that runs from up there to down here. And the difficulty is going to be getting the fish mouth the way it's supposed to be to get in there. So essentially what we're going to aim for is getting it right about here. And that will give us the needed um, reinforcement above the driver's head. And that will be good there. So once we'll get that in there, then we'll take them scrap pieces to X out in here, up and across there, and so on and so forth there. So then the next spot is going to be back here with the X bars here. So we'll, just like before, we'll X across and the straight one will of course be from driver's side to passenger. So, but as you can tell here, we'll have another little complex fish mouth and then we'll have a pretty steep angle fish mouth here. So I'll take quite a bit of figuring with protractor and that type of stuff and to find our angles to punch into the online calculator. All right, and then that brings us to our whiteboard here. So essentially, here's different door bars. This one up here is just a simple X. It intersects here. This is a solid piece of bar. So that one's solid. And then the other two are intersected into it. And the one on the bottom here, each piece is a separate piece, just with a bend in the middle. And then where you intersect here in the middle, you gusset it up. So like this one's going to be the preferred method because you'll have two bars, the strength of two bars uh, protecting you, where this top one really only has one bar right here in the middle. So your potential of getting this to bend is just a single bar bending, where down here you have to get two bars to bend. And what I'd like to do with this one is when you bend your bar, uh, rotate it a little bit. So instead of it being completely flat, it ends up being like this one over here, where your U-shape will come out just a little bit. So our bulge a little bit into the door area. We've got about, probably about two to three inches of extra space. I'd like that to bulge out closer to the inside of the door. That will give me a little more room inside the vehicle and it should uh, protect it a little bit better. Now doing it that way I may have to come through and put a separate sill bar. They'll actually tie those two corners together where otherwise if you just leave it bowed and you put pressure on here, it would spread the load out both directions. So you'll want to put an extra bar in there to support that. So that's what I'm aiming for. So I guess I'm gonna have to get my angle finders and protractors and start finding my angles to get these stupid little fish mouths where they belong and we'll be able to start tackling this door bar. 
And then once we're done with that, we got foot bars, and then we're done. So, we're getting pretty close to the end of the cage portion. Then we can move on to actually trying to wrestle the engine and transmission and such in there. So, making progress. Okay, so we're back at the board. Essentially just for you people that think, I don't know, that you don't need to learn math and that type of stuff because all you want to do is work on cars. And when are you ever going to use that stuff? Well, here is our conundrum here. We have our hoop. And then we have our backstays. Kind of get a three-dimensional look here. But you have your back stays here. We need to find a bar that goes across and what angle this is. So, this is just a simple math problem. Not anything that a lot of people is going to play around with, but it sure beats trying to protract the crap out of things and make a wild guess. So this length was 43 inches and this length here up top that was 35 inches and just with two, those two lengths alone you can determine how long this bar needs to be Of course, since we already mocked it up, we can run a uh, ruler across it. But then we can also figure out what this angle is. So essentially, to find this angle, you need to take the opposite. So that's 35. Opposite over the adjacent. And the adjacent is one next to you. So opposite over adjacent and that will give you a number. Let's pull out the calculator here. So let's just take the 35 divided by 43 point 8139. Okay, I had to get a little more scientific on the uh, calculator. But just for fun, let's take our 35 and we pop into our. So we take our 35 times 35, that's your squared, your a plus squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 35, 43, then square root of that, 55.44. And that is what we came up with with the measuring tape, so you know we're on the right path. So now, let's just punch in our number here, our point 8139. Okay, anyways, I had to find the correct function on here. Because although it's a tangent, since we're kind of going backwards, because a tangent is supposed to be you give it a degree and one side, and it'll tell you the length of the other side. But we had two lengths and need to go to the degree. So it's a backward, backwards. I believe we call it arc tangent. But anyways, that's the tangent to the negative one and that gives us our degrees of 39. So there we go. We know exactly what we need to do here, 39 degrees. And in case you're wondering, we got this other section that we need a degree on as well. 
and that's essentially just going to be 90 degrees minus 39. So that'll be what? 51? So there you go. That should be the rough estimate there, and that's going off of this being a 90 degree angle. Ours is probably going to be like a degree or two too far this direction, but this degree will get us right in the ballpark, and then we can just clearance it a little bit with a grinder and be on our way. No need to get too carried away, but that's the basics. Now I'll go back to trying to cut these things up and see how they fit. All right, so I got all my various patterns that I need for make my fish mouth on these. So I'll get cutting on this stuff and we can get cracking on this. All right, so sometimes you have to worry about what do you want to accomplish a weird set of fish mouths so you can get the weld strength you want or do you just want to make it simple so you can just zap it in so it's like as you can see this bar has a deeper cut on one side shallow on that side and it's slightly clocked one direction for the end crossbar. And then we have this neat little maneuver here. So that way when we put this in for the X brace for the rear stay, this section here is cut enough so it will sit down on that reinforcement plate. So then you weld over top of this into the reinforcement plate as well. So that way you have more than one bar attached at the reinforcement plate. Otherwise, if you had this slid up a little bit further, it'd just be the one bar from the backstay. So anytime you can overlap these weld points, you're gonna create a stronger node. And as far as I'm aware, that makes a stronger cage. So Let's go throw this thing in and hopefully it will line up very well. All right, so this section is right up in this node above my head. And as you can tell, that fits very well in there. Very small next to non-existent gaps. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So now we can throw on the welder give it a tack and zap it up down there and we can move on to the next phase alright this is starting to look good that's all X'd in and yeah then we'll have to move to something else so essentially to do too much more back here on the main hoop we're going to have to mount the seat down here so we can figure out where our harness bar should go. Because essentially with the whole geometry of this, we need to have the harness bar come in to this bar before we put these extra X bars. Otherwise, if you have the harness bar here, you're not going to have enough swing room to get everything to lock into place properly. So, I'm guessing our next step is going to have to be putting the seat in. And downside with doing that is we're going to have to wait for the steering wheel and quick release and everything to come in so we can figure out exactly how far back the seat needs to go. So for the time being we are in a holding pattern because we also should have the seat in there before we start doing the door bars. So I'm thinking for 
This part, we just need to pull these crossbars out, weld up where they cover the other bars and these nodes up in here, and then finish welding this in and calling it an episode. Just about there. All right, so that's going to be it for this time. We just got the rear part X-braced and the hoop with the single brace. We're going to have to wait for other shipments to come in for steering wheel and that type of stuff so we can figure out where to put the seat mount. And then by putting the seat mount there, we can figure out where to put the harness bar and the door bars and go from there. So that will probably be one of the next videos. So make sure to subscribe to keep up on this stuff. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.